Let's talk about what's going on in those corridors of power in Washington. You've become one of the largest individual donors to political candidates in the United States, and as a result, your voice carries an increasing amount of weight inside the Republican Party. A week ago, Ken, as everyone here knows, America held a midterm election, and the outcome was something of a surprise. There was no, call it, red wave, and many Republicans endorsed by former President Trump were beaten by Democrats. What conclusions have you drawn from those results? So the, the Red Whipple, that moment in American history, it was a great moment. American voters came out in droves in the midterm. That engagement by the American voter, that's priceless. This is a triumph of democracy that we watched play out just a few days ago. And in particular, not only did voters come out in, in substantial quantities, they voted split tickets. They would vote for Democrats where they thought the Democrat had the better perspective and policies, and they'd vote for Republicans where they thought the Republicans had delivered better policies and better perspectives on the future. That level of engagement by the American voter and a very healthy middle coming out to vote, that's a triumph of democracy. So I'm really actually quite happy about the midterms. And seeing that people on both fringes not win an election tells you that candidate quality matters. And that's really important in terms of both parties now having to advance better candidates in 2024. Because let's be clear, what we want in our country is we want better leaders in Washington. We want less partisanship, we want more cooperation, we want more thoughtfulness, and this election was a statement by voters that we've had enough. So I actually feel pretty good about the 22 midterms. You've told me, Ken, and you told others that it was, and presumably still is, time for America to move on from Trump. Uh, tonight in Florida, the former president is expected to announce his campaign to retake the White House in 2024. And as we all know, I think everyone in this room probably knows because it's hard to take your eyes off of the U.S. political puzzle. Um, one of his likely challengers for that Republican nomination uh, is Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, who just cruised to re-election victory in last week's vote, and I should point out that Ken has been a political and financial supporter of Governor DeSantis. How do you think that rivalry plays out, Ken? Trump versus DeSantis. Well, let's, let's take a huge step back and go right to the very start of the question. So President Trump, very likely to announce he's gonna run for president. And I must tell you, having worked with him directly during the onset of the pandemic, he cares deeply about America. And the team he put around him to help us navigate the pandemic, let's be clear, Operation Warp Speed is an American success story. We led the world in bringing that vaccine to market, which saved millions of lives around the world. So a lot of good things happened in that administration under his leadership. Now, conversely, very divisive moment in American politics. And it ended in a really ugly way through the election on January 6th. And I think for just a litany of reasons, it's time the country moves forward. We should thank the president for his, for his leadership over the pandemic. But the president of the United States is not just about policies. It's about the prestige of the office. It's about bringing our country together. It's about unifying the American psyche. We fell short on that as a country in his administration. Let's compare and contrast that with Ron DeSantis. Ron DeSantis, as governor of Florida, just won a landslide victory. He won by 20 points in a state that was viewed as purple just five years ago. Why did Governor DeSantis and, and frankly, Republicans up and down the state do so well? Why did Florida become so red the only blue is the ocean around it? It's because the policies of his administration were winning policies for the citizens of Florida. The ability to keep the economy open during the pandemic while protecting the lives of, of elderly was a huge win. Keeping schools open has been a huge win for children. The loss of learning that was mitigated by that is just tremendous. The state has been incredibly well run from a perspective of fiscal discipline, a $21 billion surplus last year. A state that cut taxes that has no income tax to start with. So DeSantis won by a landslide because on the merits of his leadership, the state of Florida has delivered for its citizens. So now you talk about the battle for the White House. DeSantis is going to run on a record of just unbelievable accomplishment. 
and a record of having brought the people of Florida together in a way that they're incredibly proud of the state that they live in. The question the Republican Party is wrestling with is should it unify, unite, if you will, behind DeSantis now, or should it let the Trump-DeSantis rivalry play out, possibly you know, in, in a battle for the soul of the party that potentially puts it at a disadvantage relative to the, to the Democrats two years from now. So there's, we, we all have this sort of fantasy that these decisions are made by people in these back rooms. <laughs> I, I, there, I haven't found that room, and I don't know those people. So in the United States, in both parties, the people that are running for the office of president, they're on a mission on their own. And they're going to do what they're going to do. The process has to play out. The process has to play out. Now, I, I really do hope that President Trump sees the writing on the wall. He lost in 2020. We lost Georgia because of his behavior in the Senate race in 2020. That's a second loss. And then this year, the Republicans lost the Senate because the Trump-backed candidates in the Senate races were rejected by American voters. That's a three-time loser. And I'd like to think that the Republican Party is ready to move on from somebody who's been, for this party, a three-time loser. The process will play out, but you can influence the process. You've demonstrated most recently in, in Illinois, from a state from which you just moved, that you're prepared to spend tens of millions of dollars on candidates in whom you believe. You clearly believe in Governor DeSantis. Would you say now, right here, how much you're prepared to spend for Governor DeSantis in the White House? Well, so uh, it's not that easy in America either to do that. Um, you can't buy a political seat. You can buy a voice for politicians to run with. They can have the ability to express their ideas and engage with voters. But you can't buy an elected seat. And in Illinois, I, I supported um, Richard Irvin with, with a $50 million um, contribution because, frankly, as the, as the mayor of Aurora, he was an incredible success story. As an African-American who grew up in the projects and went on to be a lawyer, a prosecutor, to serve as mayor, an incredible life journey. And J.B. Pritzker spent $35 million to back a Trump-supported candidate. So I, I actually think that Illinois was once again the cesspool of American politics, where the Democrat spent $35 million to support an ultra-right Republican candidate and to help that person through the primary. I find it to be despicable. It's, it's part of the reason I have no regrets leaving the state of Illinois. I, I don't miss our governor, and I don't miss the politics in, the, in, in Lincoln's land of former opportunity. So the big picture is DeSantis is going to need a lot of support from a lot of people, but ultimately he's going to win this election based upon what he's delivered as governor for the state of Florida and about the vision he can solve for America. And if he chooses to run, and that's not a foregone, not a foregone conclusion, conclusion, but if he chooses to run, I think he will have a compelling vision for our country. He, he appreciates the importance of education, of the environment, of public safety, of strong national defense. I think his message will resonate with American voters.